Okay, we're going to try blocking the leaves in just like I already did up here on the top and I started it over here. Uh, what we're going to do is just kind of place the leaves randomly. I've just gone out in the yard and I, I picked up some leaves that I like the look of and I'm fortunate and then I have lots of leaves to choose from out there. We have an abundance of different types of trees and I'm just going to place them in kind of a random fashion so that the sizes are are different as I go along. There's no particular order to this. We just want kind of a random look so they're going different directions. So it looks like they could have just fallen there naturally. Okay, so now I've got them all placed. I'm going to use what for me is my favorite brush, which is, oh, I don't know, about an inch wide. And I'm going to make a redwood colored wash over the top of each leaf. Very light. It doesn't need to show up much and it will probably kind of largely disappear once it's dry. So here we go. Very light colored. Very light touch. This doesn't have to be exact. If your leaf moves, not a big deal. No one else is going to notice. Don't be afraid to use a little more color if you can't see it well enough. Okay, I don't know how well you can see that, but hopefully you can kind of tell where I've made a tiny bit of an outline. And I can always come back in and rewash over the top of this with my colors if I have to to correct anything. So that's kind of handy. Washes are in my experience, quite forgiving. So there we are. Okay, now I got the wash on. And obviously I will just kind of keep going with it all the way down the road, and then I'm going to come down here and do it down there too. While I've got it out, I'll probably do a quick dry brush on the little line that was left on this step down here. Okay, so now I've got these blocked in. I'm going to move those out of the way, and I'm going to choose one of my smaller brushes. This one, number two. <laughs> just another flat brush. I tend to prefer flat brushes. That's just personal preference. I just like them better. And I'm just going to come in here and kind of block this in, keeping in mind, you know, the edges tend to be kind of serrated. They're all curved. One thing I love in painting nature is that everything has a curve to it, a lot of roughness, a lot of randomness, um, and nothing, no two things look alike, so, you know, you can, you know, kind of make it up as you go along and be unafraid. I'm using kind of a yellow ochre for the uh, base. Yeah, no two leaves look alike, so don't worry if this is exact. You're just kind of cheating with the, uh, leaves and making it quick and easy. We could freehand them, but this is simple. Uh, what I'm going to try and do here, I'm trying to make my brush strokes, brush strokes disappear. I want to put it in thick enough and smooth enough that for the most part they even out and you don't see a whole lot. And I'm not going to be super worried about it. I'm not going to fret over it or you have to start all over because I can see my brush brush stroke. I may pick up the detail brush momentarily just for the stem so if that's lightweight enough. And I have a towel here. This is my paint towel. I don't know if you can see that. That I use for dabbing my water up with and creating more dry brush. You kind of always need some kind of paper towel in my experience or a towel or something that you don't care about getting paint all over. And a matter of fact, you can see what I tend to do. There's a reason I wear paint jeans, and that's because when I don't have a towel available, I tend to use them. So, I'm gonna, this one would have had a little leaf here, so I'm going to go ahead and just add in that little missing stem, just because I think that's pretty. I'm going to add a little more so we're even thicker. There we go. And what we will do next is add in the veining and the 
a three-dimensional look and I'll break for that just because this will need to dry. <laughs> so we'll give it the drying time it needs and then I'll turn back on the camera when we're ready for that spot. But that's how we're going to put them in and I'm going to do the same thing here with this little leaf. I'll just kind of pop in and kind of fill him in. And I can always look at my actual models. I'm like, oh dear, what did that look like? I can't see my my leaf well enough. No big deal. My model is right there, and I can just kind of freehand it. Make sure it's really looking the way I'd like it to look. And I can curve it whatever way I want. It doesn't have to look exactly like that leaf. Don't worry about that. People get caught up in that. You're creating an illusion. That's all... A lot of art is, and certainly your faux finishes is an illusion. You don't have to be exacting with a lot of them. A lot of them you're just getting the feel. If you got any questions, feel free to email me. I don't always think to answer all the questions people might have on this sort of thing. There we go. Now we got a little stem for him, too. Okay. And I'll keep going, and I'll bring you back in when we're ready for the next step.